Hey, everybody. How is it going tonight? I hope it's going great for you. It's going okay on this end. This is Syntex Live. Let's get into it tonight. First things first, if you got one, pop a top. And here's to everybody out there. I hope you're feeling good. And I hope you have good health. So, mm, as I. Save my bottle cap for the upcoming apocalypse. Got to have those. You know that. <laughs> anyway, so uh, I got a whole host of notes tonight, folks. So we're going to actually have a whole bunch to go over. Hopefully I can stay away from the politics, but I got something here that kind of kind of buzzes it a little bit, but hopefully we're not going to go too much. I already see a few people in the chat saying, hi, how you doing? Hi, everybody in the chat so far. So uh, first things first, the current store, current store. Wow, I can't talk tonight. The current story is uh, it's in progress. It's right here. Um, several pages down. This is actually from the last chapter uh, and this one. So, yeah. Um, where the hell was it? <laughs> now I look like an idiot. I was trying to. Yep. The next part starts here. It's a couple pages in. Uh, I'm about halfway through. Unfortunately, it's been really busy around here. Uh, not only do I have a little job that's helping my folks, or not my folks, but a friend down the street, but uh, unfortunately, I got some some bad news, and we lost a family friend, so there goes a bunch of my week this week. So it is what it is, and you know I want to leave you guys to let you know what's going on, so you know I'm not bullshitting you. I am making it. I put it down as much as I can. It's just been really busy the past couple days. Um, so unfortunately nothing's dropping tonight. Sorry about that. I, I try to get it out as best I can. I will do what I can after the stream to knock out as much as possible, but it is what it is. So, uh, also I want to get in cause this is one of the things, uh, from the comment section is people are still confusing a Titan class ship with a, uh, space station. Those are not the same thing, folks. They are very much different. Uh, they're about the same size. But they they act very different. Just like a frigate and a destroyer are about the same size. They have very, very different ways of operating. One is general. One is very specific. And really the only true difference between a Titan class and a station is a Titan class is mobile. 100% mobile. It's meant to be mobile. Space station can move if it has to. It does, it's not meant to be mobile. So... I just wanted to clear that up before we go into anything else so that everybody, because if I hear one more person, well, don't get me wrong. It's funny to read it in the comments section. That's not a moon. That's a space station. Yeah, I, I get it. I get it, guys. It's still funny. I enjoy it. And by all means, keep the comments coming. Um, that being said, um, let's see. On to the next portion here. Yeah, everyone was right in the comment section. You guys were doing awesome there where it said, don't piss off Cookie. And somebody else brought up another interesting fact. Don't fuck up with supply. Okay, people you don't want to piss off. The cook, supply, doc. Okay, those are three people right off, off, right off the bat, which no surprise. The ones that keep you fed, the one gives you, uh, you know, an IV when you're hungover, and the one that makes sure you got a full belly so you're not hangry all the time. You know, very important, very, very important because I, I can tell you as a grunt, folks, you give us a warm place to sleep and a full belly and we're we're docile. We're, we're just going to leave you alone. Just don't wake us up if you don't have to. OK, a lot of people are asking about sequels. Yes, sequels are coming there. There's but again, I'm running short on time to work on things. It is it is what it is. OK, uh, you guys demand sequels. I will give you a sequel if the story can do it. Um, the problem with the uh, story with Titan class, you know, it's a battleship. It's a moon. It's a holy shit. You know, that uh, problem is that one was more or less tied up in a bow. Um, you notice that the, the situation there was humanity was very static. They were very protective. They were isolationist. They didn't want to reach out. They reached out because they're like, wait a second. We got to protect these guys. Something's up here. We got to find out what the hell is going on. Very important that we find out about that. Can I extend it? Yes. 
Is it going to be easy? Not so much, uh, because again, you're ta- you're looking at the humanities got in possession pretty much the only Titan class warship in existence at that point. So unless they want to go Titan versus Titan, which honestly that'll end entire sectors if one of those things goes kablooey. Um, again, can it be done? Sure. Can I do it? Sure. Am I going to do it? Yeah, if I can. Uh, so. Yes, there will be sequels to a lot of these stories. If you guys demand sequels and there's enough views, it's going to happen. I will twist myself into a pretzel knot and tie my brain into a bow and then pull it tight just to make sure that I get you guys what you want. So, um, also, uh, somebody sent me a story idea. Um, now, these, the idea is interesting. However, it... Uh, doesn't pass the sniff test, folks. Hold on. I got to wet my whistle here. Um, the idea was to be pulled into a different dimension where it's only two or three dimensions. The problem is we actually deal in four. People don't realize this, but we, we in reality, we deal in four dimensions. And the reason I can't do two and three is because our minds cannot warp that way. It's For me to actually try to ex- explain it is at least for somebody who jumps in and show how his brain all of a sudden melted to try and figure that out is difficult at best. It's one of those things uh, we used to say in the army, you can add to, but you can't take away. And let me explain this real quick. When you're looking at something, whatever you're looking at right now, you look at it and what your eyes see, if nothing is moving, you see two dimensions. Okay. You can't see what's behind it. You perceive it, but you can't see it. I'm looking down at this. I can't see the knife that's behind it, but I know it's there because I know that it's back there. I perceive there's a dead space behind this thing here. So we perceive we perceive in three dimensions, even though we only see in two. The kicker is if you only have three dimensions and you don't have the time variant, which is the fourth dimension, everything is perfectly still. Nothing moves. Everything is just, that's it. You're not moving ever. It's like that movie where they went into, found the, uh, uh, was it the, 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 what the hell was it? Was that stupid lake or river or whatever? The fountain of youth, the fountain of youth. And it, it just slowed time down to the point where nothing was moving at all. They were actually there. There was no time variant. The time variant had been removed. So without all four of those, our minds would, would instantly break because we wouldn't be able to comprehend what was going on. Even if we still had thought and with only three dimensions, you're literally stuck, frozen, like one of those statues of angels they had in Doctor Who, which I think, yes, was one of the spookiest things they ever came out with. And I I give a shout out to those guys. That was a genius idea. Those things were horrifying. Mm. So um, you got to remember on that space and time, two different things. Uh, they're usually linked, but not fully. And that's why the whole idea of teleportation is possible. That is why a fold system is possible because you're not folding time. You're folding space. Um, Could you work with both at the same time? Yes, you could. That's why there's a time space continuum. That's how that works. And now again, it was a good idea, my friend, but it, it doesn't, it just doesn't work in the hard science fiction that I work with. I cannot bend. I tried. I sat for a good 30 minutes trying to torque my brain enough to find a way to do this. And it, it's just not possible. It's just, no. Now, if you were going, cause again, in two dimensions, you have no depth either. You would be literally, you would constantly be running into things. If you did, and if you still had the time variant and you only saw things in two dimensions, well, guess what? There's no vertical at all. You're just, you're literally flat. You're, you're literally a level of nothing. So yeah. Now, if you're wanting to say that the perception of things is off, that's different. Um, Yeah, it's, it's messed up. So. Um, oh, I do have to agree with you guys. All you guys who are in the in the comment section. Yes, politicians do suck. That was the whole point of that 
whole thing about the guy going, it's a yes or no, yes or no. And the politician went off on this tangent. Like, can anybody here speak English? Anybody? You know, that was the kind of the point. If any of you seen a, a one of these hearings they have, they're always talking out their ass and nothing makes sense. They ought to do a full Ace Ventura, bend over and freaking squeeze their hips so they're freaking butthole puckers as they freaking talk. Because all they're doing is talking shit anyway. They might as well fart the whole time as much time as they're talking shit. It's crazy. So, I mean, yeah, they, they, do, they do. Politicians just royally suck, especially career politicians. That's like having a West Pointer as your officer or, or Annapolis guy as your officer. Or, uh, shoot, it's not called Annapolis. What the hell is it called? I forget, top of my head. It, it has a certain name. And I, again, it's a Navy term. It, it kind of missed me. I'd have to look it up. Citadel, the Citadel. Okay. If you guys are about to write that in the Citadel, if they come from there, usually they're career officers and they suck so much. Wow. Oh, man. They, they, they must come out of those schools with a complimentary case of knee pads as much as they suck. So, uh, on to the next part here. You guys really like the well bargained and done. I actually threw that in as a side piece, and I figured, you know what? A lot of you are Battletech fans. So that was kind of a salute to Battletech. Okay. Uh, for those of you who don't know Battletech, um, just j this is just a little sliver of what's out there. Believe me, there's so much lore, it will break your brain if you're not ready for it. One of the groups that's out there, political or socially speaking, is called the clans, and they are very, very um, shall they're they're so steeped in their honor that even speaking in conjunctions is considered insulting. So when they actually do a deal, when it's when both parties agree, they say well bargained and done, and nobody anywhere ever disagrees with that because. They've come to an agreement. Usually they, they would either shake hands or whatever if they're in front of each other. You know, do the whole strength and honor or whatever. I don't know what they do. Maybe they freaking punch each other in the face. It's the clans after all. Those of you who know Battletech, you know what I'm talking about. Um, but I, I keep trying to do hat tips to other science fiction guys. I really do. If you want me to throw a hat tip to a certain science fiction, please, for the love of God, put it in the comment sections. Maybe, and I will read it. I go through the comment section at minimum once a day. Um, oh, somebody with the typical American politics in the comment section. No, typical Western politics. That's what I was getting at. Um, that, that same thing would have happened if they land in France, Spain, Spain. Poland. I like the Polish folks. I've been there. Going to Warsaw was one of the best vacations I ever had. But believe me, the governments will still act the same way on that. Now you go to like the Brits or something like that. You guys, because you still got a king and queen, there's other stuff attached to that. And you know it. So, yeah. But yeah, it, it wasn't typical American politics. It was, I will agree, typical Western politics. All right, on to the more fun part of this show. I will say, a, a few of you brought up, there's going to be remakes of classic shows. Uh, Babylon 5 was right at the top. Apparently, they're redoing a couple of the treks. They're trying to redo Doctor Who again. They, they're just trying to redo all these classics. All I can say is, for the love of God, stop doing that. Oh, dear God. There's channels up here, uh, Computing Forever. He does the whole uh, looking at pop culture thing. And even he, he's been doing this a hell of a lot longer than me. And he keeps saying the same thing. 99% of all remix, oh, they, they suck. They suck like a porn star on friggin' meth. I mean, that's how much they suck. I'm just, ugh, just stop. They got to stop doing that because it's just, it's just bad. It's just, it's, I don't know why they insist on trying to remake something. Because when they remake it, it's like making a copy of something in the old Xerox machine. Is the copy any is, as good as the original? No, there's always flaws in the copy. That's why you don't make a copy of a copy. Everybody knows that. Um, can I say that maybe they remaster some of the CGI? Adjust a little bit of the placement of the ships? Maybe add a few more ships? Like when they remastered... 
the original three Star Wars that came out, episodes four, five, and six, for the most part, what they added worked. It added to the story, especially when they did the attack on the Death Star. And instead of having just four, three or four ships lined up behind each other as they're flying down, opening their X-Wings, they had a whole bunch of them scattered all over, and it looked like an actual squadron coming in. That works. But they didn't fuck with the core narrative. What are you doing? Seriously, stop doing that. Again, update it. That's all you got to do. Update it with current tech so the white stars aren't so weird looking. Put the shadows on the edge of the ships correctly. And when they fire an energy weapon, actually have a red uh, or blue or whatever sheen go across the freaking ships. That's what they got to do. Oh, dear God, did they screw this up so bad? And I, some, I actually got that from somebody else. If you watch the old uh, Return of the Jedi, which was supposed to be Wrath of the Jedi, by the way. Or not Wrath, Revenge of the Jedi. When Vader and Luke are fighting and they're in shadow, if you look, it's two solid sticks that they're whacking together in as their shadows are dancing across. I'm like, that's wrong. I didn't notice this as a kid, and now I can't unsee it. However, when they redid the Obi-Wan Vader fight with the actual shine of the laser dildos going across Vader's face, it looks so much better. I, I think it adds to it, but they didn't change much of anything. They added a couple of the cheetah flips and whatever, but that's about it. I think they did a really good job remaking that. But all they got, just update it. Don't remake it. Mm, reboots. No. No, no, no. Okay. That's enough of me talking about reboots of classics because they're classics for a reason. Stop fucking up the classics. Okay. I want to go into a little bit, just, just changing gears here, folks. Uh, the current series that's coming out. I just want to make sure everybody understands the difference between the two allied species that the humans have. The Kashmir's and the Yankets. Yes, that name was a joke, but you know what? I just ran with it. I figured, you know what? If there's going to be a super serious, I got to throw a little bit of comedy in it. And by the way, if it doesn't work, if it falls flat on its face, if it, you know, if those jokes kick the story right in the nuts and it doesn't work, put it in the comment section. I will find a way to take it out. Believe me, I will find a way to take it out. And honestly, it wouldn't be too hard to do that. Now, you just got to understand, both of those species are a lot bigger than we are. Uh, the Kashmir's, uh, I got it written down here, their average height is six foot nine. And that's be male or the males are bigger than the females, taller, you know, vertically speaking. You know, they're they're pushing well over uh, seven feet. And the females are like between six four and six eight. I mean, they're they're just really really big, which is why their ambush tactics work. Is because that much mass pouncing at you claws first is gonna freaking hurt. Um, but yeah, they're they're felines. If you guys missed that in there, sorry, I didn't go into a full on description. Um, I will a little bit more later, and believe me, it's going to play into the way they are just a little bit more. Um, as far as the Yankets, and I can't believe I got to keep saying that now because now I feel dirty. Mm. Their design, in my mind, looks a lot like an old science fiction. I wonder what old science fiction it might be. Hmm. I don't know. Maybe the original thumbnail for the first... Uh, chapter of the story might play into that just a little bit. If you don't know what I'm talking about, go ahead and, and uh, look back at it if you haven't seen it yet. I don't want to get too deep into the story because it's still going and not everybody has got all the way through the uh, four chapters that are already out yet. You know how I hate spoilers. But I want to bring those up because there was some confusion. Okay, just some simple confusion in there. And I want to make sure I got that out. Okay. Um, also, another person put in, and it, it was a great comment, and I was, I'm glad somebody caught it. 
when I was talking about the ship that was going on the long patrol with Cookie, how they were stuffing every little corner, every little tiny little space with food, you know, preserved whatever it was. I actually got that from reality, folks. Um, that is commonplace tactics, especially World War II uh, ships, especially the U-boats, the, the submarines. Those, In some cases, you literally had to crawl from one room to the other on your belly because there was so much food stacked up because they're going on long-range patrol and they need X amount of food for that long out there. You also need, Back then, you need to bring extra fuel, too, so that was taking up space. So, yeah, that, that one was straight out of reality. Remember, it's, it's hard science fiction. It's as close as I can get to the actual science that's out there. You know, it actually, ooh, that does pass the sniff test. So, in case you guys are wondering why it was that way, it is. Also, if you know your uh, naval history, especially American naval history, that's where the ice cream portion came in. Okay, that, that's, just want to make sure you got that. Uh, on the same <laughs> on the same story, thank you for whoever asked if they served Johnsonville brats during the barbecue because that was just funny. I, I it was a good thing I wasn't drinking something I would have shot it right out my nose. And that that was just funny. I, I appreciate the laugh that day. Some of you guys, you come up with some of the craziest stuff, but I still do listen to it and I try to incorporate it into the story. All right. Before I get into the comment section, I got one last piece here, and that's from the Battletech story, the original Battletech story from this channel. That one, uh, the guy actually gave me a rating out of 10, you know, how good the story was, how good the narration was, and all that. That story was written in 2008. I'm going to say that one again. That story was written in 2008. That was actually rewritten because the original story was written in 1998. I know because I still have both on digits. I didn't want to put out the first one because it was dumb. I'm sorry. It's, it was my first attempt at writing a non-canonical Battletech story, and it 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 was terrible. It, it, it's like bad anime. I mean, that, that was, I mean, like really bad. It, it was just horrible. And nothing against anime, guys, uh, but it's just when anime misses the mark, it really misses the mark. But uh, just FYI for anybody who was, whoever that was, I didn't have written down the name here. Um, yeah, it was written back in the day, and I was just learning how to narrate. And because of that story, believe it or not, that's when I started scripting just about every single word that goes down. So I was learning. So that's why my narration wasn't all that good. Um, well, that's the end of my notes, unless you guys want to add something in. And if you do, please, by all means, put it in the comment section. I'm going to go. I'm going to start up at the top. Uh, we got the sir. We got the goodest sir in here. Uh, we got we got a Mr. Green. Uh, your message got pulled out, by the way. Uh, Isaac's here. Yep. Sir is back. Oh, Brian's here. Hello. Um, let's see. The sir says, current story sounds like a prelude to ambush predators, hence why I like it. it it's not. It, it's not. Uh, the fact that I used felines, uh, again, because I didn't want to use canines, pure and simple. I needed a pack hunting, ambushing type of critter, and every other ambush predator that I could find that fits the bill wasn't a pack hunter. Um, so yeah. And the only thing that stuck in my mind at the time was the Kilrathi from, uh, wing commander. And I didn't want to look, make them look like lions. I'm sorry. No, I, I'm not ripping off that. The, the original series wasn't bad at all. It was actually pretty good. And they got some really high end actors to play that. I don't know if you guys have seen the original game. So they got like the, if I remember correctly, the guy who played Biff from Back to the Future and a whole bunch of other folks in there. It was pretty good. Hmm. Ernest saying, checking in, oh, great storyteller. Okay, hey, oh, great storyteller. I like that. That's fun. <laughs> oh, great storyteller. Please ravel us with. 
Uh, sir, giving his condolences. Thanks. I appreciate that. Um, yeah, that's, <clears throat> I'm going to try and stay away from that. Cause that's going to kind of kill the mood of the stream here. Um, war sniper in the house. Oh shit. Duck snipers coming. <laughs> like you'd actually see a sniper coming. Not if they're doing the right thing. Okay. Uh, he says, I sent my story to you, but didn't get a message back from you. on my own channel mail. Unsure if you received it. Okay. War sniper. I received a character mock-up. I, that's what I received. I did not receive a story. Um, what I received was the, the basics of what's supposed to happen. Um, it wasn't a complete story. When you said you were going to send me a story, I thought you were sending me something that you had, had actually completed, not just the story idea, basic plot, and uh, character development. That, that, was, that was pretty much it, or how the character should develop. Excuse me. Um, you're right. The, um, one of those definitely was not YouTube friendly. One of the pictures, <laughs> um, but that, that's going to take me a long time to work on their, uh, war sniper. It, it, I can't just sit here. I don't do the, just draw an outline and just talk into a microphone anymore because I end up pausing too much as I think about the next part. And if you guys heard my old stuff, you heard me pause a lot. And I tried to take them out as best I could when I was going through the editing process, but I obviously didn't catch them all. You know, I'm not a, I'm not a Pokemon master. I didn't catch them all. Um, but yes, I did get it. It's just going to take me a long time unless you're actually, you, unless you write the story and you have like the actual, like broke down all that. Uh, I couldn't just, you know, throw it up, read it over a couple times and then do it. It just, I, I got it, that one. I would have to create the actual story. So if you have it written down, by all means, send it. If not, again, it's going to take a while. Okay. I'm talking around in circles here. Oh, the sir is, is here again. Oh, we got two sirs actually. Hey, Mr. Syntex, Mr. I did not spend 20 years in the infantry to be called Mr. Oh, it would have been nice to be called, sir. Uh, don't get me wrong. I, I appreciate it. Uh, Warris and I were saying, wait, wait, what? <laughs> uh, Demon, hello, just a little late. Hey, you're, as far as I'm concerned, you're on time. Mr. has a succubus on his, uh, on his icon there with the wings in the right spot. And everybody's saying hi to him. Let's see. He says, oh, Sniper saying he's level 53 in Helldivers 2. I, I, you guys are killing me. I'd love to have that much time to actually spend in front of and just play. I just don't have time to play. I I still have my uh, Battletech game over there on my travel laptop, and I, I've barely gotten into it. And it's been sitting there for a couple of years or a couple of months now. Or no. Yeah, just over a year. Sorry, I just had to do some math in my head. Um, but yeah, level 53. I don't know. What's the highest you go to uh, for Helldivers? I don't know if 53 is high. If it goes up to 10,000, I don't know what the... You know, if it only goes up to 100, that's that's something. That's definitely something, because that hasn't been out all that long. Uh, let's see. Um, Caleb says, just came here from Trek Yards live chat. Trek Yards? I'm guessing he's another sci-fi guy. I haven't heard from him. Um, Demon said, oh, Jesus. Oh, you're praying now. I need to play with more with you guys. <laughs> yeah, if, if you guys can, by all means. You know, there, there are worse ways to spend your time. I, I can say that. I When I was young and we didn't have a lot of video games, especially in the infantry, we drank. And we drank a lot. I'm, I'm amazed I don't need a replacement liver, honestly. Uh, let's see. Here's one of the sirs. I hated those angels. Stopped watching during... Capaldis, um, I'm going to mispronounce that, Capaldi's run. It went woke and got worse after him. Yeah, the whole series went woke. Uh, right before the blonde chick came in, or actually, no, long before then, it was already leaning in that direction. There are folks that have done wonderful videos explaining that. But it was slowly pushing in that direction. And always giving these little jabs, these little 
pokes right in the ugh. It, it's like having a little kid just jabbing at your kidneys and jabbing at your kidneys, and then finally he just hauls off and wham. Yeah, it's, the the angels were horrifying, but um unbelievably easy to beat. Um, because seriously, all you gotta do is look at them and shoot it. I mean, they, they never did that because I don't know. It wouldn't have been a good show. They shot a few of them. Uh, War Sniper agreeing. Demon. Okay. Uh, Sir Braddock here. Um, Babylon 5 was good. No need for a reboot. Absolutely. They do not need to reboot. Because the guys that played Mal uh, Malari did such a good job. And I can't do the voice for nothing. Okay. Um, but yeah, they, they, those actors were just so good. I mean, they, they did such a good job capturing that. I will say this doesn't matter what sci-fi show. The captain is still the weakest one. There's only been one sci-fi show out of all of them. where I'll say the captain was a strong character. And that was the next generation Star Trek. Aside from that, I haven't seen one ever. Hmm. Um, let's see. Sir Braddock is back. Don't need a reboot. Oh, where was I? Okay. Oh, I, I sorry, Caleb. I jumped you. I agree. Most remakes are super bad. Not just bad, but super bad compared to the original. Yes, they do. They, they're just, yeah. How do they break the laws of physics? By sucking and blowing at the same time. I mean, yeesh. Most sequels or prequels are prequels. Uh, thanks to Star Wars, uh, whenever somebody says prequel, everyone cringes now. Let's see. Sir Braddock is here. Don't need a reboot, but please continue Firefly, a.k.a. Serenity, or the Roughnecks comics, a.k.a. Starship Troopers. Yeah, the CGI uh, movies were really good. Uh, the show, it needed an update. The The CGI was like Beast Wars era type stuff, but it still was pretty good. Um, let's see. Not going to play Helldiver because of the impact. Oh, okay. Yeah. Well, what can I say? Sometimes the software don't match the hardware. What it is. But I will say um, I didn't get to watch Firefly much. Reason being is um, I know where they ripped off their storyline. And it just put a bad taste in my mouth. It just, uh, sorry, it, it at least for me, this is me personally. You can enjoy it all you want, and I hope you do. But I personally can't watch it. Um, any anything that rips off another IP, just it just loses me. Um, but the Starship Troopers, still one of the best books I ever read. I got a copy right over. Where is it? Yeah, it's right over there by the Halo books. Oh, wait, you guys don't believe me. Hold on. Yeah. Yeah. Boom. I always keep a copy around because guess what? I enjoy this book and I still think it should be required reading at West Point. It used to be until they said, oh, wait, it has a line about how democracy is a failure. Well, no fucking shit. You know, it's just. Democracy is just mob rule by a different name. Okay. Um, but yeah, um, actually, Sir Braddock, were you talking about the Starship Troopers, the movies or the TV series? Because those were very, very, very different. Um, they followed different scenarios on that one. Um, so just out of curiosity. Okay, going down here. Caleb chimes in. Have you ever thought about posting your series platforms like... On platforms like Royal Road, Reddit, or Fiction Press, in addition to to reading them. Oh, hold on. I got to stop because, bam, we got a Hamish in the house with a $5 New Zealand Super Chat. Oh, hey, here he is. Um, he says, your story is still going strong. Sorry, I've missed some of your live stream. Work's been busy. You're doing well, brother. Well, well, brother, I can tell you, uh, you're not the only one who's busy. Um, that's unfortunately the reason why I can't have anything drop tonight because I'm not done with it yet, at least this next chapter. And I'm not going to give you guys a half a chapter when it's getting to the good stuff right here. I actually was pissed off that I had to actually stop writing.
because I had to go take care of some other shit. And was, oh, I, I tell you what, sometimes it's like chewing on rubber covered in acid. It's just like, oh, you just, you just want to keep going. But you can't because you can't. But I do appreciate you chiming in, Amish. And I hope everything is going well. You actually said a couple weeks ago that you were going to be getting busy anyway. And I don't mean getting busy in the fun way, but getting busy on work. So everything is solid, man. Everything is freaking solid. All right. Let me uh, scroll back up here to see where I was at. Okay. Okay. I wanted to write these down here. Um Okay, so I don't know what Royal Road is. I don't know what I'm gonna have to look that up. Hopefully, that's not British because they'll kick me off. Now, I don't do Reddit, uh, mainly because everything I do is done longhand, um, and every most everything there is done. You have to type it out. If I typed it out, you know what would happen is it would end up on somebody else's channel, most likely an AI channel. So and. Those guys who just do AI and don't create their own work can kiss the darkest part of my ass. Okay. They, oh God, they just, woo, they get on my case. Uh, let's see. Fiction press. I don't know what that is. I'm going to have to look that up. Additional posting. Now I was posting for a while on um, Rumble. And because I posted on there, I my channel got demonetized for a couple days because they thought it was a, somebody else posting us. And no, asshole, it's me. I just don't have them connected because if you say something wrong on Rumble, they want to be able to demonetize your channel on YouTube, even though they put your still put commercials on it. So, yeah, I'm not playing their stupid game on that. Um, so, here my this thing's jumping. Okay. Ernest says, are they from the old show Land, Land of the Lost? I don't. Honestly, I hadn't thought of that show in probably 20 years. Um, but I saw the one when I was a kid where they had some, I guess, some dwarf in a, in a dinosaur costume going around. Uh, and they had like lizard men running about. So I was like, what the hell is this? Uh, that being said, I, yeah, no. Okay. Sobrati says, but I love Wing Commander. Still, still have the Super NES game, Kill Rafi. Okay. Yes. Um, I, I'm just not going to make them lions. Okay. They, they can be tigers or bears. Oh my, but I'm not going to make them lions because I respect that IP so much. I think they did an excellent job back in the day. I think when somebody else got a hold of it, they decided to push their own agenda into it. And they did what the woke folks are doing now is they took a good IP and they basically shoved something up there and then let it spread out until the whole IP died. I'm mean, like, ah, okay. Uh, SS demon, which by the way, you might end up having a ship named after you one of these times, dude. Uh, oh my God, Wing Commander! I remember playing that. I never beat it. I got stuck on a mission where I'd go where they told me, but nothing would happen, and I couldn't figure out how to progress the mission. Yeah, that, that was a problem with a lot of the old games. Uh, some you had to do something specific, but they never said what specific. A lot of times, uh, if you listen back on previous missions, they'll give you a hint, but. I don't know what to tell you on that one. Hmm. Or something just wasn't on the screen. Case in point, the first time I played through um, ODST, Halo ODST, I missed the sniper's rifle. That's up. Yes, yeah, sniper's rifle. It's not a sniper. The sniper's rifle that was hanging. I, I totally missed it. And then I was like, oh, wait, fall back on your training, dumbass. Look everywhere. I mean, hell, when I came back from my deployment, everybody thought I was looking for something because I'm, I'm walking around doing this, you know, just, just as I'm going, they're like, what are you looking for? What are you talking about? I'm not looking for anything. Your head keeps moving. No, it's not. It, it just becomes part of you. Anyways. 
you don't think of that in most video games. And I missed a, a really funny cutscene for a while because of that. I'll give you a hint on which cutscene. Get this thing off of me, which I still think is a funny line. That guy's a good actor. I, I like him. I think he's, uh, yeah, he was in Firefly, if I remember correctly. He was also in my dad's, one of my dad's favorite shows, The Rookie. Even though he's not a rookie anymore, they still call it that, which I don't get. Okay, Worst Never says, no problems, uh, Sin. I don't mind waiting. I just don't know how to continue the story myself. Okay. And how to do interaction between the two. I'm already happy that you received it. And I will wait with persimmons. Is that, is that what that is? That's a fruit, dude. Um, I, I don't. I, I, either I'm mispronouncing it or I'm misreading it. Um, now, War Sniper, if you're planning on actually doing the side-by-side -side comparison on people talking, one of the easiest ways that works, I've never had to do this. I've shown people how to do it, but my brain can, as long as I don't have other people talking in the background, I can do this already. But you take your paper and you actually put two different columns down, okay? And you put... One person over here, the other person over here, and you literally, there's their line, and the next one, there's the next line, and then down lower, there's the next line. I'm, I'm jumping really far down the page. You know, line, 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 you know, remarks back and forth. Don't forget your question marks and everything like that. It helps a lot. I've known people to come up with some amazing stuff that way, but their mind just doesn't work like mine. They can't just have it come out. Now, don't get me wrong. If I'm doing a conversation with like four or five people in the room, I still have to do that because sometimes I'll forget who's actually there and I have to write down, okay, this person is in this mood, this person's in that mood. It, it's just, it, it is what it is. It's just one of the tricks of the trade and that's all. All right. Um, but yeah, if you're, if you're wanting to go on that, just make sure, for one, you write down each one, again, with the question marks and the exclamation points and what they're doing outside of the actual quotes, very important. You know, whether like, hmm, you know, even just stroking the chin, wondering what's going on. Yeah, that, that's important to do that for any uh, story. Just it adds depth to the characters. If not, they're all just robots talking like this. You know, it is what it is. Um, just like, uh, you ever read, I don't know if any of you seen the script for 12 angry men, they did pretty much the same thing in, in the, in the notes. They actually said, don't forget about such and such, you know, it's, it's crazy. Okay. Uh, on to the next one. War sniper says the highest level in hell divers two is level one fifty. Okay. So you're a third of the way, just over a third of the way there. Okay. I don't know what you get for the levels. And again, I, don't have time to play. It would be nice. I miss playing Halo. I, I still have the last Halo game. It's still in plastic. I haven't been able to play it. Although when they made, started making Cortana the villain, I was like, what the hell were you thinking? 343. Three. You guys don't know what you're doing. Um, let's see. War Sniper. They increased the level a few weeks ago. Okay. Oh, so it was up to about 100 and then it jumped. Okay. So hopefully they're not pulling a World of Warcraft where they just say, here's the max, and then everybody gets to there, and they're like, okay, what's next? Where's the next expansion? They're like, Screw that. We want to make money. We, we want you to keep playing. So here, add some more levels. I, I saw that. I was like, what are you guys doing? Okay. Uh, Demon says, that woke crap is in everything. Movies, TV, anime. Oh, God, help us. Uh, video games, comics, some are worse than others, but they, they, but the crap is trying to take over everything. And the reason they do all those remakes is because, okay, I didn't see, well, I know why they do, why they want to take over an existing IP because if they made their own stuff, it's horrible. It's horrible. Nobody would ever watch it. You actually have to have something good for people to stay here. If I didn't have halfway decent content, none of you would be here. I guarantee that. Uh, so, yeah. Um, the 
getting into the movies, yeah, it, it thankfully they only hinted at a little bit during the whole uh, uh, latest monster movie with uh, Godzilla and Kong, and you know it, it wasn't enough to take me away from the movie itself. I I went there to watch a giant CGI fight, and that's what I got. So I was fairly content with that. Uh, with TV, yeah, especially commercials. It, it's to the point where I can't even watch TV. I, Unless I'm hanging out with my dad or something, and I, I watch uh, Wheel of Fortune. It's actually what's on right now. Uh, Wheel of Fortune with him. And even that show is going woke. Uh, the, demo, the number of personnel of each demographic is skewed way off. And it kind of takes away. Don't get me wrong. I still, you know, who doesn't love Vanna? So, you know, you, you're right. Now, I didn't see a lot in anime. Now, the one thing with anime is they've always had the strong woman. Is Originally, it was a tongue-in-cheek joke, and they just kind of went with it, where almost every woman there is, she's a warrior. But the thing is, she always has some sort of mechanical advantage. They're almost never actually fighting unless they're not, or fisticuffs, unless they're not human. They're, they're close on that. Now, the people who do the voice acting... When it goes over to, to English, yeah, those, those, those. Uh, I'm trying to think of the right type of word, but I guarantee I'll get demonetized if I use it. So those, let's just say pieces of something. I'm actually glad the AI is kicking them off. I, I, I'm actually happy about it because we can finally get Vegeta cursing up a storm like he was supposed to when you actually see it when it's the, the dub is done by people who speak freaking Japanese. And the thing is that that was part of his character. He was so pissed off that he, he couldn't articulate his words. Yeah, that's kind of just kind of important. Um, but they they kept dulling it down and dulling it down and dulling it down and dulling it down. And it's just, it was crazy. Um, you're right with the video games. You can't have a pretty girl for the past like 10 years. You couldn't have a attractive human female. You could have monsters that have a little bit of femininity to them. Not anymore. Have you played Baldur's Gate lately? Almost all of them. I, I mean, I got bitter, bigger chesticles than they do. I mean, it, it, it's insane. All of them are so, I mean, they, they have slightly the hourglass frame, but there's no, there's no curves. There's no, there's no bulk in the right places. And you're just like, what the hell? And they just had another one uh, come out. You look at the woman who voice acted, I think is a Star Wars one that's coming out. And they, uh, the, the, the woman voice actor is, is pretty. She is very pretty. The character that she's designed or that you see on screen, dude, there's not enough blind pole folds and little blue pills on this planet to make that happen. I'm like, something's wrong here. And all we have to do is, uh, well, I can't really say something about something that might be sweet or something that has babies in it and something that might be incorporated. You know, as soon as they got involved in anything, it went to total shit. Everybody knows this because they've been ousted so bad. And now, as soon as they touch a project, they don't even have to send anybody there. If they're associated any way that they've even met with anybody associated with that project, that project is doomed to fail. It is dying like the death mark of Disney. It is failing, and I'm laughing as they burn in, and it's great. Let them die. Let, let, let this whole woke bullshit die with them. Fuck them. And you hit the nail on the head with comics because they hate redheads. What is it? Every single redhead is getting friggin' race swapped. It's getting swapped with a, a different sex. And yes, I will say it that way because gender is a friggin' made up word. I'm not going to go there. Um, that being said, yeah, they, they have this thing against redheads totally. If Thor was a redhead, it would have been turned to a fat woman like that. It's, it's insulting. It really is. 
I mean, it's bad enough they're they're swapping him out for now swapping him out for his daughter. Okay, progression. Okay, but not every guy is gonna have a daughter who's the firstborn that takes over. They're not airborne. That's the airborne curse that every airborne guy, the first child is always a female. I know most of you never heard about that, but they're, they're trying to say that this is a common thing. I'm like, no, asshole, that breaks the law of averages. Unless these guys have zero testosterone, but have you seen them? They make He-Man look like a wimp. Okay, I'm going to keep going. We got a rage here saying Farscape was really cool. A lot of people I know loves Farscape. I, again, I'm hard science fiction. I couldn't, I personally, now don't, don't make me stop you from enjoying it, but I personally couldn't get into it. Especially a bioorganic ship that was run by a self, uh, a, a sentient centipede, basically. I'm like, what? Um, hold on. Let me think about this logically. Ow, son of a bitch. Okay, I'll come back to that later. You know, if you don't know where that's from, that's from the Creeper from uh, Batman. That was hit one of his funny lines when he first came out, and they put it in every iteration, which is great. Uh, okay, Demon saying hi to Hamish. Here we go. Um, Sir Brian said, said to say, I, it's 1 a.m. Have to go to bed. See you next week. See you later, Braddock. Braddock. Brad, is, I'm assuming it's Braddock. Or Braddock. Oh, it's you, shit. Uh, let's see. War Sniper says we have we have no NOU. Okay. Uh, AT AT walkers that make units as enemies and held divers too, and they are hell. Okay. You want to make units as enemies and held divers? I don't. Okay, so you're actually facing. The Star Wars walkers. Yeah, don't get in front of them. Because they can only turn their heads so far. And that's where all the guns are. Unless they've been updated or something like that. But again, as long as you're not in front. They're meant to literally walk straight at the enemy. And then squat down a little bit so people can get out. That That's all they're designed to do. Uh, in all honesty, I could take on... You, you give me... Me and one other person in a couple of uh, Highlander battle mechs, and we'll take out every at, -AT before they even get close. You give me a full star of heavies and assaults, along with another star of lights, and we would have wiped the friggin' floor with the friggin' Empire. It's not even close. Somebody actually made an audio recording of it. You can actually just look it up on YouTube. It's a Battletech versus Star Wars. Now it's all audio. There's no visual to go with it. I hope they, that changes, but it's all audio. And it's just kind of funny because it, in all honesty, you're, you're taking hard science fiction versus science fantasy. Hard science fiction wins every single time, which is why if they, uh, I forget which channel it is, they put Halo versus Star Wars and Star Wars always loses uh, because you know, range and things like that. We don't, uh, Halo doesn't have to get point blank to friggin' shove a Mac round up your ass. Okay. Uh, Demon saying goodbye to everybody. Um, oh, the sir says, how do I donate money to your stories? Well, there's always super chats. Um, this was actually brought up earlier. Somebody asked me for my Patreon. Um, I haven't set up Patreon. All that stuff was going to be set up uh, once I reached the over 9,000 part. And that was when the t-shirts were going to be going away. For some reason, the t-shirts are taking a lot longer. However, we're not exactly gaining a lot of subscribers on this channel all that quick. Um, once that goes in, I probably won't do Patreon. I'll probably do like Give, Send, Bro or something like that. Um, it will not be anything like Zell. Okay. That holy flying donkey nuts. If you have that, get the fuck away from it as fast as you can. What a messed up thing. Um, because they actually sent me a notice and I didn't even think about it, but they sent everybody I worked with the same damn notice. One guy that I worked with answered it and they're like, Oh, uh, apparently somebody paid you a thousand dollars extra. You weren't supposed to get this. It's in your Zelle account. 
uh, click this here to uh, send it back. Well, he didn't realize that he's actually giving all the passcodes at the same time. And they emptied his Zelle account, thousand bucks immediately. And they tried to do even more, but he was able to stop it. You know, we called his bank real quick. We're like, what the hell? We compared what they showed him, what they sent him compared to the actual Zelle website. We put them side by side. They were identical. There's no way you could have told it was a forgery. We deleted that shit. So you've never seen an entire room. People go, fuck this, fuck this, fuck this. Delete. And it's like, are you sure? Yes. Are you sure? Yes. Are you sure? Press no if you're sure. I'm sure, asshole. You know, it's just like they, they don't want you to get away from it. But it's, it's crazy. Um. But yeah, for right now there, sir, just uh, super chats and super thanks. That's the best we got. Um, and I appreciate all of them. You'll see it at the bottom of your screen. Um, he also says, always keep your head on a swivel. Gotta, if you don't keep your head on a swivel, it's going to get blown off. Let's see, uh, War Sniper says, level 50 was the first, then it became 150. Oh, shit. To make room for more weapons in higher levels, they make it possible that you can find premium currency in the mission themselves. Okay, so you're not actually purchasing. Okay, that 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 sounds decent. You know, that's that's like being in BattleTech and finding a whole bunch of sea bills so you can buy a bunch of shit. I got no problems there. Mm. My issue is microtransactions. When they start doing that type of BS. I, I lose interest in anything. Um, I actually, back in the day, I had the the Star Wars game when they first started using photogrammetry, which was beautiful, by the way. But they started doing those uh, loot boxes with the microtransactions. I never got off Xbox Live so fast. I was like, you guys suck. <clears throat> uh, let's see. The Rage says subtitles only. In which are you talking about? You got to remember, I'm still getting down to you guys. So if you're going to say, make sure you reference what you're talking about. Um, let's see. Chris jumped in, says, hello, all. Ava's here. Okay, Ava. Duck. Everybody. Duck. You're not going to live that one down, Ava. <laughs> Drop it on everybody's head. <laughs> oh, jeez. Uh, War Sniper still showing off at level 53 at Hell Divers 2. Yep. Also known as the bringing back of the manly games. You notice they actually beat Call of Duty now. Uh, everybody was pretty much done with Call of Duty because it's getting all sorts of weird. They're grasping at straws now, trying to keep the game going. I'm like, dude, if you're in a combat zone and you're in that much shit, you're going to get clipped. And it's not going to be because you got betrayed. It's just because law of averages, motherfucker. Okay. Uh, see demon says, yeah, Western game companies hate attractive women. Ain't that the truth? The craziness that came out when Cortana in, I think was Halo four and she actually had curves and she would naked, but she didn't have anything poking out towards the front. There wasn't any type of toes between her legs. So, you know, and she's supposed to be, a, uh, her own CGI image. You know, she's an AI, not a real woman, but they still flipped the fuck out. And I was, I first, I laughed at them and I was like, oh crap. Then I realized that this is the first stage. First they laugh at you, then they fight you, then you win. Well, right now the Wokies think you won because of that. And no, they're actually losing big time because we just stopped buying. Uh, let's see, they had, a, uh, let's see, companies hate attractive women. That's why they're attacking the creators of Stellar Blade, I heard about this. And because they keep attacking it, I pre-ordered it. Oh, you and a lot of people pre-ordered that sucker. Just because uh, the, the the women actually have an ass, for one. I'm like, seriously, th this, this is normal. This is the way women are supposed to be when they're moving around that much. There's really going to be fit. I mean, when they made even though I think the leotard with the thong was a bit much, when they made Cammy from uh, Street Fighter, her legs were really strong, just like Chun Li. Her legs were just massive because her style is all legs. Her muscles have built up that much. But 
Cammy was more gymnastic style, which meant she had to be leaner. And because she used her muscles so much, she was very shapely. She used the uh, protruding butt cheeks to kind of make guys go, wait, I don't want to break that. Well, wait a minute. It's already broken. Look, it's split down the middle. But I don't want to break it. I want to grab a hold of that and see if I can't fix it. So, but yeah, th this, uh, it, it's absolutely crazy. Uh, you're right, Demon, that they just, they hate attractive women. I don't know if it's they hate them because they ain't attractive women or maybe they're pissed off because they can't get any attractive women. I don't know what it is. They are just so far up their own ass. I wonder if they do it for the warmth. I personally can't bend that way. and Even if I could, I wouldn't want to do that. It's just crazy. But yeah, uh, Stellar Blade and a few bunch of others are getting pre-ordered, especially straight from Japan. Uh, don't, don't pass go. Do not collect $200 because they're actually doing a good job. Uh, Demon saying, hey to Ava here. Let's see. Caleb says, another possibility would be to post them on DeviantArt. Now, I'm going to put some serious thought into that one. Um, I don't know. I haven't been on DeviantArt in a long time. And uh, I actually, the last time I was there, I was looking for an artist because I was trying to get a comic book made. And these guys wanted so much money. Per, it was like $200, $300 per comic book sell. And not in another like $200 if you wanted it colored per sell. I'm like, uh, yeah, um, you can piss off that way. It, it's No, it, it wasn't worth it. Um, these guys want to live off their drawing. They don't realize that you can't live off being a, a, a writer or an artist anymore. The market has been saturated way too much. Ever since about the 1980s, the market's been saturated like crazy, and the internet does not help matters at all. Even doing what I do, there's so much out there. The thing is, I don't do the AI bullshit. And a lot of you folks in the comments section of the videos are saying the same thing. Enough with the AI crap, because there's no emphasis. There's no, there's no desire in it. Especially when you actually are having uh, somebody wrote down the three periods is supposed to be a, a pause there as somebody's thinking. Hell, I even do. It's right here. I got one right at the end of this. And they'll actually say dot, dot, dot. I'm like, oh, if that doesn't say it's a computer, I don't know what is. Ugh. But um, yeah, I'll look into it. I don't know if DeviantArt does audio. If they do, that'd be another place to go. Oh, Jan's here saying good morning. Well, good evening. <laughs> I'm on the other end. Uh, Demon said, oh, my God, I remember Demon Art. I haven't been there. For, yeah, me neither. Um, I was actually, when you mentioned that, I'm surprised they were still up and running. They have some really good stuff. Um, I know they put that name in to try and draw people in, but uh, most of what they have is YouTube friendly. Well, let me phrase it right. Friendly enough. Don't get me wrong. There's a lot of gore porn in there. It's crazy. But still, at least when I saw it. Uh, but yeah, there's some excellent artists that are on there. Uh, Ava says, good news. Vortex Shield Generator is 70 cent complete returning to center. Okay. <laughs> so you're 70 cent or 70 percent complete on that story okay cool and a little i don't know if that's times three or is that supposed to be something else was that one of those emoticon thingies <laughs> uh probably saying good morning everybody times three let's see demon saying hell divers 2 is it is extremely free to play and friend oh play friendly okay cool and the spots where you can spend money you don't have to because you can get it in game and it's super cheap compared to other games. Oh, that's reminding me of when uh, MechWarrior Online came out. It was pretty much, I mean, you still had to join, but there was no constant fee. Um, you could pay for other stuff that you wanted that you burned in the game, sure. But they kind of put the, the stop to that because a lot of people were complaining and a lot of folks like me, even though the option was open, I wouldn't buy it. I just didn't. And it was getting a little ridiculous. And then you get one team that bought all the stuff 
And next thing you know, you can't take two steps without being trying to dodge an artillery barrage or an airstrike coming in or like 30 different UAVs jumping up. And you're just like, oh, shit, I got to shoot all these fuckers down. And next thing you know, you're getting nailed with frigging long range missiles or LRMs as they're coming at you in waves. And you're just like, ah, crap. And, you know, I I used to pilot a Jaeger mech for crying out loud. That thing's a direct fire harasser mech support platform. That's to sit up on a hill and fire a whole bunch of rounds down and piss the people off, force them back into a hole while your buddies flank around and, you know, shove some SRMs up their backside. By the way, anybody in Battletech who plays those lights, you sneaky little... What, what, what do the Brits call? Oh, yeah, you cheeky little bastards. I mean, you get, always snuck up on me. But I'd always, the first thing I do, pop the UAV and try to spin around. Next thing I know, I'm holding their attention, and here come friendly hour arms right on his head. <clears throat> hmm. I haven't been on MechWare Online in a while, too, either. I miss it. Let's see. Ava said, well, what can I say? Dropping ass is still fun. <laughs> I'm pretty sure it's supposed to be dropping on asses. <laughs> you are just, you got an evil streak, Ava, and I like it. Don't change. Okay. Alan said, howdy, everybody. Howdy, y'all. Howdy. There you go. Uh, War Sniper. He, oh, he's laughing with you, Ava. I see that. Uh, Ninja Ninja Shark asking, have you ever heard of a game, Hell Divers 2? Hmm, I might have heard of it. You guys in the chat think it, we might have heard of Hell Divers 2 just a little bit. <laughs> I'm not giving you shit, Ninja. I just, uh, we've been talking about that on and off all night. Uh, War Sniper here. We have a walker in Hell Divers 2 that we can use. It has dump, oh, dumb fire rockets. And a medium penetration chain gun, but later we get one with four cannons. Okay, now you got me really wishing I could play because, again, I'm a big mech fan. So if you're talking about a walker with that much firepower, I'm interested. Because you know what they say, when in doubt, bring a bigger gun. Although I'm worried about the uh, penetration chain gun. I'm not sure what the hell that's supposed to be. Um, I'm sure it's supposed to be a, an anti-infantry weapon or something like that. The uh, the thing with dump fire rockets, you got to be careful. I don't know if you're firing them in volleys, how fast they reload or whatever. That's one of those things. And th this is my take on most video games when they use rockets. If you're only firing one rocket, you got to be very careful leading your target. If it's firing in volleys where they, you know, zig, 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 really fast, what you do is at, well, you fire and then you drag across really fast. So you're not trying to lump them all in one spot. You're trying to spread them out across an area. A lot of times that's enough where everybody else in the front line, even if you miss, is going, yeah, I'm going to go back this way and I'm going to, you know, keep your distance. Um, but... At least that's how I do it in in uh, in video games. Used to really piss people off with that. Let's see. Worst never says, but I will drop one for you when you join. Okay. Hey, again, I just don't have the time, guys. I want to. I really do. I, if I had the time, I'd play a whole bunch of games with you guys. But it is what it is. Uh, Ninja Shark, fight for freedom. Oh, fight for freedom, fight for democracy, for super earth. There's a super earth? Are you talking Nabaro? Nibiru? I can't pronounce that shit. The, the, the big planet that's supposed to pass by us and cause all sorts of holy hell. Nibiru, I think the name is. Is that super earth? <laughs> With the Anunnaki. <laughs> oh, they're looking at us and laughing. Hmm. War Sniper responds to that with the whole indeed yeah indeed you do demon i defend super earth with all my might when i have time to play it <laughs> yeah time is like the man says time is never on your side um ava said mech warrior online i played a raven light mech took down four assault mechs one atlas two mad cat mark two and two that she doesn't know 
You're one of those cheeky little. You. Again, Ava, you're evil, but don't you ever change. I swear to God, I, I'm going to find you with my, my, my Jaeger double D and I'm going to put those dual 20s right on your face. Ugh. You, oh, you evil, you evil. Oh, yeah. One of the, uh, one of them was like, I was the fastest gun in the mech. Yeah, I'm sure you were. I mean, a Raven's really quick. The only problem is just like an urban mech, you lose one of your, that one torso with all your guns. You're pretty much screwed. Um, unless you're doing like a capture the hill type of thing, then your speed is just one hell of an asset. Unless you face somebody like me who just loves gauze rifles and can plug you from across the map. We did that once where one of the light mechs, I think he was in a commando. He got into our formation and I'm doing a Jaeger with AC twenties, one on each side. And for those of you who don't know, that's a big boom, but the range is absolute garbage. But my job was to, when the two forces met, I was the one who had to take arms and torsos off. Well, this guy, he was causing a holy hell and, it's a push to talk system and everyone's going, Oh my God, he's right there. I can't hit him. I can't hit him. He's being such a pain in the ass. And I fired him in sequence. Boom. And I caught that sucker right on the side. Perfect hit. First round took out the torso. Second round took out the center torso. He was down. I just hit the thing. So he's not a problem anymore. And everyone just kind of like, I, I swear every single one of the mechs, even there just kind of turned and looked at me like, what the hell was that? I will tell you this right now. Lucky freaking shot. That's what that was. I just happened to catch him perfect. Um, but sometimes it's all you need is a lucky shot. Uh, War Sniper says, one rocket per shot, but it's not guided. Just point and shoot. Okay. Yeah, then you're actually, well, when you're talking with folks on the ground, <clears throat> you're talking splash damage. For those, anybody who's not good with those, uh, with any type of rockets, here's what you got to do. Aim for the feet. It's got to hit something. If you aim for the torso and there's nothing behind them, then that rocket is just going to go, if it miss. If you aim at the feet, even if you miss front or back, it's still going to hit, and then the, the blast radius is going to send them flying. You know, War Sniper is probably sitting there going, dude, don't give away the secrets. Yeah. Some people just... It, it's one of those things people don't think about. That's all. I just, and that's okay. Let's see. Let me get all the, because you put all these back to back here, sniper. Let me get one rocket per shot, but it's not guided, just point and shoot. That is why I say when sin, no earth, no earth itself is a super earth. Okay, I'm, I must be missing something here. Um, oh, not happy with Ava. I'm not happy with those little... Did, ooh, you didn't play Mech Warrior Online much, did you there, Sniper? Because I'll tell you what, the, the light mechs, if they, they cannot stand up to anything. They just do not have the armor. And especially with some of the new weapons that came out during the updates, they get clipped once by a heavy gauze. There's no light mech anymore. Or if you use an Arrow 4, which is a guided missile, which could take out a light mech in one hit. It's like hitting a Willy's Jeep with a freaking Javelin missile. I mean, it's just crazy, the devastation. However, they're hard to hit. Especially when you get a sneaky person, I won't mention who, Ava, who gets around and can wiggle through your formation. And by the time you realize they're actually shooting at you, you don't even know what direction it's coming from. Before you know, she's blown out your gyros, half your engine. By the time you turn around, she's got the finishing move, and you're a burning hulk as your engine, or your engine explodes, and your pod goes flying into the air. With you in it going, what the hell just happened? Let's see. Uh, Ava also says, I bolted an ERPPC onto my Raven. That was fun snipe. I'm sure that was fun sniping. Uh, for those not familiar with the ERPPC, that is Extended Range Particle Projection Cannon, i.e. an energy weapon, which is basically 
Well, if, if we went by science fiction, if you've seen, ah, shoot, I'm trying to remember that movie, the Doom movie, the Doom movie with the B, uh, the BFG 9000 when he fires that big energy ball and it melts things, more or less, that's what a PPC would actually do. It would m less melt and more short things out, but it still would hit with enough that it would start melting your armor off which is why it, when it hits armor, it acts more like an energy weapon than an actual projectile, even though it's a concentrated ball of electric hate that is flying at you at the speed of Mach fuck. And especially when somebody like Ava is on there, just poking her head up, poking her beak out with that raven, and going, howdy boys, zoink, and then ducking down by the time you realize that zoink just freaking clock you on the side of the head. You're like, what the fuck? Where'd that come from? Oh, there's a light mech out there. Oh, wait, we got to focus on... Cause like, like, Son of a bitch, stop shooting me! <laughs> it's, that's what they do. Um, Ava says, your Jaeger is going to go bye-bye. Yeah, I probably wouldn't be able to stand up in my Jaeger anymore because I my personal loadout was usually a AC2 and AC5 on each arm. And what I would do is I wouldn't press them both fire at the same time i would stagger them slightly so since they're not firing at the same rate i get a constant stream of rounds coming out and there's no chance of missing in between something's going to hit and since they're giant tracer rounds that's why i say it's a support unit because everybody can see where those rounds are going and then they all they gotta do is follow the rounds even if they see him just at the barely top of the screen like, oh he's shooting it there's someone over there I don't even have to lock anybody with stealth. All I have to do is fire in that direction. They know somebody's over there. And it's kind of hard to lock on anybody when you're constantly having stuff bounce against your, the, your cockpit and you can't see what the hell's going on. But yeah, um, if they updated the Jaeger, maybe I'd pilot one. But give me something better. Okay, Demon says, I need to boot up my Mech Warrior 5 and see what my current loadout is. I haven't played in so long, I forgot what I was using. Eh, I can see that. I remember the weapon loadout was Laser Vomit. Yes, that's what we call it, Laser Vomit. All lasers. That, and I had Jump Jets. Oh, so you're just waiting to explode from overheating. Yeah, that's, uh, yeah. Laser Vomit... Mechs are good if you get a good line of sight, but if you have, if you're trying to hide behind something, they're just going to pick at you with LRMs until you friggin' fall apart. Uh, you just like the any other direct fire weapon, you have to be in the open to actually use it. I usually like to have, if I only have four in that I got uh, a team, I need. Two guys out there, usually brawler mechs with a lot of armor to soak up all the hits. I'm going to be in my Jaeger overwatching, and behind me is going to be my missile boat, which is almost exclusively LRMs, maybe one or two small other weapons to back him up. So as they're brawling, I can force the enemy back into a different location. Once they got a lock, here comes, you know, bring the rain of all those LRMs, just wave after wave after wave after wave. And eventually they're going to chip off enough ammo that our brawlers are just going to walk in and go, hi, doink. Oh, you're dead already. Um, but yeah, the, the, but the good thing with laser vomit mechs, if you can keep them cool, is you can core out most mechs very, very quickly once you get within range with the medium lasers. The, the large lasers just get way too hot, way too fast. It is what it is. It's just part of the game. Uh, Techament Rage is here saying, MechWarrior Online, I hate spiders. <laughs> Those things are just, for something made out of paper mache, that mech is just so hard to kill. I, I've never been very good at piloting the lights, but they, wow. So I don't know what the hell they do with it. I in my In my inventory, I used to have one set of light mechs. And it was actually a set of spiders. And what I did is I stripped everything out of it. I put the stealth armor on it. I jacked up the engine as, as powerful as I could get it. I had one weapon or one offensive weapon. That was it. I had the UAV. 
I had the narc and I had the uh uh sorry the the late the ah, god damn it I can't even think of it right now but I had the laser to pinpoint the enemy and what I would do is I would I would run towards their back or off to their side I'd poke up and I'd hit them with a the laser I'd lock them and I'd be like target in the open echo five dire wolf fire for effect and then as long as they didn't see me I kept it on there and I'd say good hit fire for effect repeat 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 and I'd just have all their LRMs just puking out like crazy and I know one guy he must have been pissed because he's out in the open it's a freaking snow planet so he's probably thinking oh yeah I can run this thing hot well, guess what? You can't do that if you're freaking getting tore apart by freaking missiles. He's swaying back and forth and shit like that. And finally, I just see him fall apart just as he looks at me. I run up. I tag another one with a narc beacon. And I just scream out. I, you know, push the talk here. Narc. Uh, I think it was a... No, it wasn't a freaking... God damn, what was it? Yeah. Madcat Mark Two, Echo 4. And, did, and they did the same thing. Just tore everybody apart. I kind of wish Baradol was actually playing on the other team so that I could freaking smack him around. If you don't know him, he does a lot of Mechware Online content. He's done it for years. Okay. Where was I? Okay. We got Chris here. Well, all my 10-hour workday just turned into an 18-hour work. Oh, God. That sucks balls. Just had our brake press go down, and I was walking out the door here at work. Oh, have a better night with the meat. Oh, God. That, oh, dude, I hope you're getting overtime for that shit, because that's just horrible. That just sucks. That's a get home from work and nobody better talk to you type of day. Ugh. War Sniper says, I never played Mech Warrior. And Earth itself is called Super Earth. And when you have time, when, not now, not next week, but when you have the time, believe me, guys, if I have the time, I will let you know. It's bad enough I got to cart my nephew uh, twice to different states over the summer. I agreed to it already. I can't back out on it unless something big happens. Uh, but, yeah. Yeah. If I can, I'll let you guys know. I, I mean, I got the big TV downstairs. If it was possible, I'm sure it is. I got the big 86-inch TV downstairs. I'll go through that sucker, and I got the game system and everything hooked up to it. That would be fun as all hell. I think it would be. Um, now, War Sniper, you never played Mech Warrior, BattleTech, or Mech Warrior Online. Those are very, those are different. Um, uh, Mech Warrior is mostly the story games. BattleTech is the actual strategic game, and Mech Warrior Online. A lot of people call it a twit shooter, and I didn't want to say that, but it kind of is. Um, because in all honesty, the a torso twist of a of a hundred ton war machine shouldn't be instantaneous. You know, it should be slow, methodical, and it should actually make you wobble like hell. Um. Something I wish they would put in the game, but they don't. Uh, but I do recommend, depending on your play style, will depend on which one you want. Okay. Ava says, Mechware Online spiders are scary arachnids. Yeah. They're just, yeah. They, they literally say, welcome to my home, said the spider to the fly. Yeesh. Real pains in my butt. Uh, Amish. Uh-oh. Amish had to go. See you later, Amish. Everybody saying bye to Amish. Uh, let's see. Ava here. When I took out those four assault mechs, I didn't fight them <clears throat> one, at, one at a time. I fought them all at once in a valley. The six mechs in a valley. The six mech got to me. One leg left in all but my core and cockpit. Oh, you were a stick. Yeah, that, that's the term used. Your stick. No no weapons. It's just your engine. And, and and that's it. You're just walking around going, crap, don't shoot me. Don't shoot me. I hope they don't shoot me because I'm freaking toast. Oh, shit. Yeah, I wouldn't expect you to have any armor after that, Ava. I really, I mean, seriously. Although you get to a certain level of no armor, you get an extra bonus. 
uh, on your um, on your standings because there is one for uh, only having uh, I think it was twenty. Yeah, one for 45% armor, 35, 25, 15, 10, and 5. And I don't know anybody who got down to 5 and was still alive. Um, let's see. SS Demon, I could melt small mechs in one burst. Two of the most mediums. Okay, I think I'm reading this wrong. Two for most mediums. I'm an Alpha Strike build, AK. Fire all lasers at one time. It's pretty good at killing shit. And it's all about the timing and your aim. Yes, absolutely. Very much so. Um, now, it's it's aim, it's distance, and making sure that you are not stuck in a group. Because if you got to freaking keep blasting alpha strikes, you're going to spike your heat so freaking fast, you might as well eject because you're going to turn into a freaking... Costco's chicken as you rotisserie inside the cockpit and then eventually the engine's going to explode. But yeah, the, like I said, direct fire, those laser vomit mechs are horrifying. If you're one-on-one, -on -one, I'd never want to go one-on-one -on -one against a laser vomit. It's just, as soon as they recharge and they fire that second time, you're missing parts. It's guaranteed if they haven't already stripped parts off you already. Um, I think I've only known one guy. He figured out he wasn't uh, wasn't a Nova Cat. He was on. I'm trying to remember exactly which mech he was on. He made a laser vomit that could fire continuously, and it was fairly quick too. I don't know how much armor he had on it, but he had so much heat sinks on it and so many cooling vats in it that he could just just keep going. Uh, he would drive right in the enemy formation, and he he would just fire. And take one out or take parts of it off. Then he he cool real fast. He turned to another and he fire again as soon as he's recharged. And it's just and I'm just like, dude, you might not survive anything, but holy crap, you're what's winning these games. He's like, yeah, but I'm not getting enough points for it. He he was a sucker for the KD ratio. Okay. Um, Demon also says jump jets help keep you mobile enough to get that perfect shot to end the other mechs or escape. They are, but uh, you would be amazed how many mechs I've picked off as they're flying through the air with the graves of <laughs> splat. Uh, it, but again, it's like you said, it depends on aim, timing, and all this. And remember when I told you I used to pilot a Jaeger with dual 20s on it? The dude flew up as he was fighting. He spun around, landed in front of me to shoot my buddy in the back, and I blasted his mech apart and that was yes that was a spider for a second i thought it was a commando no it was a spider and he just blew up like a freaking i don't know like a firework he just went up the guy actually got in the chat later it's like you asshole i had the perfect shot and i was like okay <laughs> next time watch to see who else is there I will say this, uh, those who use jump jets to actually get off a cliff and then just drop. Yeah, they, they, you guys tend to be some of the hardest people to kill. Um, demon says, I'll call off work that day. You join us. <laughs> okay. Um, again, I have no idea when it's going to be. It's also planting season around here and we're trying to get the new garden done. So yeah, it's, it's, crazy i just brought in about a ton and a half of manure to make a new garden area and it's not been easy spreading that shit out yes pun intended okay war sniper says i would be a sniper or support like Artie, or go close and personal and go f or go full stealth okay you can only choose one of those <laughs> um one of the worst i've seen actually was stealth armored lights that actually have goss or ppcs on them because you they just disappear that being said i will tell you a, a i honestly if i hadn't seen it i wish i recorded it because this was just one of those things that just happened i forget which map it was it's it's kind of a desert map it got some wreckage in the center of a former drop ship and you got like caves and cliffs and stuff all over the guy's up in a Jenner and he's picking at us 
And it, the game just started. And I saw him shoot, and I was like, oh, you sneaky little bastard. So I hit the arty just below that point uh, of the cliff where he was at. Now, he I, I don't know if he saw the smoke, but he backed up a little bit. The arty came down, bullseyed his cockpit. I didn't even know that was possible. He was done. I, guys, hand to God, I, that's what happened. That's what I saw. I'm like, what the f- How? What? When? Huh? <laughs> hey, I'll take it. Um, but yeah, the, some of those guys, the thing with stealth armor, it makes you very, very fragile. You're in a light mech and you're making it more fragile. Something's wrong. Uh, let's see. Ava saying, demon, fight me. Fight. Round one, fight. We used to do that all the time on the push to talk system. Round two, fight. We did have one guy. I, I thank him for this because it got us going. I don't know if he taped the button down or whatever, but he actually had Mortal Kombat blasting in our ears through the whole thing. And I'm just like, I don't even care if we lose. This is fun. <laughs> Usually I got like Sabaton playing or something in the background. Um, let's see. Demon says, I don't know about that, Ava. You are pretty scary. No, she's not scary. She's evil. Is a difference. I think I stand a chance if I can hit you. <laughs> uh, you guys are both sneaky. I mean, th- no, let me rephrase that. You both are very, very sneaky. So sneaky that you sneak up and shoot somebody right in the butt and they don't even realize you're there. And uh, I- I'll tell you what, the only time I ever got... It- Let's just all call it poetic justice. I was in, uh, yeah, I was in my stalker and a light got behind me. And we all know if lights are trying to go around you, you push your back up against the wall. Well, the idiot got between me and the wall and I literally crushed him with the ass end of my stalker. And a stalker's 95 ton. I mean, squish. Turned him into a crunchy. And all I could say, <laughs> If anybody else had seen that and made any, any reference, I was fully to be prepared. Like, take him out, get him out of there, get him out of there. Like he's stuck between my butt cheeks. Get him out of there. Yeah, crushed him with buns of steel. Uh, let's see. Well, that's a shifty day. Ava says, "Okay." Uh, Worst name says, "Me when Artie guns rockets in position sending." 10 seconds till impact. Reload in progress. Reload ready. Sound hell. Requesting cords. How I would talk. Oh, how it would really be. Yeah. Oh, yeah. I I even put the real thing. I had to sketch it or uh, draw it out a little bit um, when I uh, did the the humans or or what, what was the story? Uh, it's 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 quiet. Humans humans must be around too quiet um one of the sequels they actually sat there called for fire was the actual ones i'm sure you remember that one and it's like fire mission troops and armor in the open grid echo zulu one two three four five six seven eight nine ten shake and bake shot out splash out Raise five zero fire for effect, and yeah, the, that's what you'd actually hear. But if they're in whisper mode, it's really, really quiet. You, you don't hear it as they're dropping rounds and rounds of pure hate on your head. You know the old warheads on foreheads thing. And see, demon says, "Oh, and sin, if you make if you make me a ship, I'd prefer to be a battleship or carrier." Like the Luker Hulks in Star Wars. Oh, you want to be a support ship. Sending out swarms of fighters while still packing a punch. How about a nice Hawaiian punch? Okay. Uh, uh, the thing is, I, even in the uh, newer stuff, the only time I ever use any type of carriers is to take on a planet. Because that's what they're there for. That's what makes them good. It's They're, they're designed for that. Uh, fighters in space again, unless you're sending out just 
thousands upon thousands of drones doesn't really doesn't pass the sniff test, guys. Um, not when you're crossing large swaths of space. Uh, Ava saying dibs on being interdiction ship. Hey, no spoilers. With a big gun, you know, you got to be careful with that. Uh, most interdiction ships, uh, you got to remember, they use a whole lot of power. And don't forget, you're surrounding yourself with an energy bubble. If you fire an energy weapon inside an energy bubble, bad things might happen. Like, really, really bad things may happen. <laughs> so you got to be careful with that. Now, just remember... Energy weapons don't give a shit about, uh, or energy shields don't give a crap about solid projectiles. Hint, hint, wink, wink, nudge, nudge. So, yeah, sin in a stalker, meat ass, you know. I, it was basically when I did combatives and I farted in one guy's face, he immediately started tapping. I was like, I'm done, I'm done, get off of me. <laughs> he didn't stop waving. He's <laughs> like, you... He looked at me, you're an asshole. Like, but I won. Shut up. <laughs> uh, don't worry. It happens more often than people want to say. Uh, let's see. Boo, where was I? Uh, Rage saying, one of the meanest things on Mecha Online is a Phoenix Hawks, two large lasers, and stealth armor. Yes, because that thing pumps out even more just hate than a PPC at almost the same range. Or no, those are ER large. But still, it's still quite nasty. And you're right, stealth armor. Because Phoenix Hawks is really fast. Plus, it's got that little bonus with the uh, with the jump jets. It's just kind of, yeah. They're, they're just... The only thing is, because it has those really high shoulders, I find them a lot easier to hit. The hit boxes are just... makes it a lot, lot easier. Don't get me wrong. There's still a royal pain in my ass, but still. Horse number says, I want to be a stealth sniper or Titan. Who says you can't be both? Hint, hint. Um, Ava saying powder guns are fun with nuclear shells. Oh, so you want to be like the uh, nuclear cannon. <laughs> Fire out and, you know, you got the bullet, got the gun, release the power of the sun. Here you go. Yes, I did steal that off the chubby Sparky because uh, actually he stole that off someone else. Anyway. <clears throat> now you piqued my interest. Well, the thing is, just that same story we were talking about before with the Titan class warship. Because it used a fold system to come in, it basically was stealth. Because it just kind of showed up. And it said, oh, by the way, I'm here. You might want to go away. You know, pull a Delin on there. If you value your lives, be somewhere else. And pretty much, yeah. Especially when you got a giant energy weapon at your core. Uh, nuclear already with interdiction. Yeah, you just got to be careful because the thing is nuclear weapons in space, when you actually do buy the real physics, are more or less as far as kinetic force, they're worse than useless. Um, they, they build up a shit ton of heat if you're close enough to it. But the main thing is the EMP that comes off, which means any interdiction is pretty much fucked. Uh, when you're using jamming like that, they're very, very sensitive pieces of equipment. They will more often than not shut down to protect themselves than try to power their way through it and risk burning the entire system out. Uh, let's see. Demon says, I believe a Titan class uh, and ambush a fleet, but only once. Though most times, oh, though most times that's all you need. That's true. That's true. Depending on the size of the species, absolutely. If they're still in their cradle uh, system, most likely, yes. Would you ever use a Titan-class warship to blow up a planet? All I can say is, are you freaking high? 
I that, that's one thing about Star Wars that always blew my. This is why it's science fantasy, not actual science fiction, because if you blew up a chunk of rock the size of a planet and it blew omnidirectional like freaking Alderinian that they did in the first movie, you would still have chunks the size of Russia flying straight at your mobile fortress there. I don't care how much armor it is. You're going to either A, damage something really important, B, get hit with enough kinetic force that everyone's going to take about 20 feet that way, straight into a wall, most likely causing many of them serious injuries, if not killing them. And worst comes to worst, you're going to put yourself, the whole station, out of commission. Or if you breach the engine core, you're fucked. <laughs> I mean, seriously, at that point, the whole thing's going to blow up. You're not going to need a couple photon rally torpedo thingies into a freaking hole. Let's see. Uh, it says EMP only happens when inside certain areas of a magnetic field and vacuum. If outside that, yeah, certain conditions do have to be made. It's true. Uh, you still have just like the heat corona. You still have a wave of it. Now, as far as actual EMP, like if you tried to knock out the entire U.S., you got to be about uh, I think they said thirty-five thousand feet straight up over Kansas. No, 32,000. No. Sorry. You know what? I got my numbers messed up, but you have to be almost directly over the U.S. and really freaking high in the ionosphere, so it forces a certain wave down. She's absolutely right that you actually have to have certain conditions to get it to work that way. However, again, interdiction jamming fields are very, very, very sensitive pieces of equipment. Let's see. War Sniper says, I want to use a mech cannon as as weapon as Doomsday if possible or something else as fun. Are you okay? I'm kind of missing where you're going. Are you trying to talk about using the friggin' thumper cannon or are you talking about the uh uh the artillery piece or what's up here? I, I'm I'm missing what you're talking about there, War Sniper. Okay, Demon says, How about a carrier titan instead of fighters oh it carries you you spoke carry your you spell carries like a person it carries a swarm of battleships that's actually very much possible um most dreadnoughts can do that um the only thing that makes a uh the uss infinity not a dreadnought class is because it can't hold anything bigger than a frigate um, if it could hold actual, like, battleships in it, then it would be a uh, Dreadnought class or a Titan class. Um, most likely Dreadnought. <clears throat> but, yeah, uh, anything that big, again, but that works. That does work. Now, the thing is, would you need to do that? Well, it depends on your technology. Uh, War Sniper saying drone battleships. Oh, we're back to Battletech again. Like the drone fleet in Battletech. If you don't know what they, they used the drone fleet back then, and it was devastatingly effective. That being fed, said, they're not unbeatable, but you're talking about people that basically have to be suicidal if you go against them. These are thinking machines that move like a missile that can maneuver faster than you, think almost as fast, and are Dead nuts accurate. I mean, scary. Um, but yeah, drone battleships. Well, hell, even Babylon 5 did that with the Centauri War. Does it work? Yeah. Is it going to be uh, super effective? Again, depends on your technology level. Okay, Ava here. Magnetic area or not in a vacuum, it creates a high energy thermal pulse and a shit ton of reds. Yes, 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 yes. In any, any type of atmosphere, it's going to fool. You are a hundred percent correct on that, Ava. Uh, now, as far as the, the thermal pulse, the actual 
heat corona that comes off and how far it's going to be, that really – then this is just for everyone else. I know you know this, Ava, but it really depends if you're talking about an air burst or a ground burst. Those have very, very different things. Anybody out there who's confused, again, there's great YouTube videos on this. Um, they'll explain the whole thing between an air burst and a ground burst, and they have animations to back it up. I could sit here and explain it, but I would not explain it good enough. Um, oh, yeah, the yeah the, the radiation that it creates, well, that depends on what type of weapon you use how many rads it's going to pump off the old ones. Yes. Oh my God. They were dirty. The new ones now, eh, not, not as much. It's still bad though. Let's see. Ninja is back. We are going to take over the planet of hell divers. 99%. When Joel sees the planet next day, goes back to 1%. <laughs> okay. But you don't mess around with it, Joel to do, 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 do. Okay. Uh, let's see. Let's see. War snipers, uh, or bring my own ship. Hint, hint, wink, wink, nudge, nudge. Oh boy. If you're, uh, if you're going to bring your own ship, usually those who have their own ships fight a whole lot tougher. And that was kind of the point with ambush predators is that was their ship. Their ship was their home. They knew every nut, bolt, weld, crevice, everything about their ship is one of the reasons they're so effective with it well that and the fact that they're ballsy enough to go point blank range before they say okay goodbye cloak and fire at the same time by the time you even realize what the hell's going on you're already being perforated um demon saying damn you ought to correct that happens don't worry about it um ava says Introduction pulse followed up by the gun firing. Yeah, okay. Yeah, well, okay, scramble their sensors for a while so they can't see the round coming in. That works. That works really well, Ava. That's that's that smart, smart, smart. This is why you're smart enough to drop on people's heads playing hell diver. Screw shooting them. I'm just gonna land on you, you mother. Yeah. You know, <laughs> pull hole, WWE. Yeah, run off off the top wire. Um and they got to, they have to recharge. Uh, well, the thing is, the depending again on your the tech level you're talking about, the interdiction field can be just left on. The thing is, if you're going to fire an energy weapon, you would have to, you just have to shut it off for and let it dissipate for the one or two seconds before you actually fire your energy weapons. The thing is, if you have a whole bunch of hull mounted energy weapons, and you want to just send a, a wave of concentrated electric hate towards the enemy, you're going to have to drop your interdiction shield. And they're going to say, oh, there they are. Oh, wait, they're shooting at us. Oh, fuck. Um, let's if you're talking about an interdiction pulse, almost like an EMP, so they would have to reset their system, uh, different tech. Uh, I understand the idea, but that's different tech. Let's see. War Sniper says, I can make a description of my own ship with weapons and its escort fleet. Mining fleet and logistics fleet so you can use it in your story. Oh, hey. If you're going to break it down Barney style, by all means, send it. I will do what I can to put it into something. I, I will. Um, let's see. Continued. But you have already a little bit in the story I sent you. Yeah. That's actually true. Um, let's see. Demon says, Luker Hulk, Hive, or Wraith, Hive Ship, the Infinity, and CSOs. What the fuck is a CSO? I'm, I'm drawing a blank, sorry. Are all technically carriers, but also could be considered battleships because of their armor and weapons. Those are my favorite ships from their most likely perspective. Uh, perspective uh cinema games or lore whichever that you want to call that now you are technically correct because what makes a battleship is heavy armor 
heavy weapons usually designed to take out other heavily armored vessels. Uh, here's the rest of it. Uh, their respective universes. Those that are capable of both sending fighters and slugging it out. If you're a battleship, you do not have to have fighters. Not in space combat. No, that is a strictly terrestrial situation. If you have a fighter wing, that's a bonus. But to be an actual battleship, you do not require it. Those, if your primary weapon is the fighters and not the guns, it is a is specifically a carrier. Okay, it just has to be a carrier that can throw down a bit. Um, just like, uh, what was it, uh, Battlestar Galactica. They couldn't tell the difference between the two. They didn't know if they wanted to fight with their big guns or they wanted to fight with their fighters. So there was a, there was a an on and off on that one. Mainly because they supposedly had to watch the fighters because they couldn't rebuild any. And I'm just like, uh, not until the other ship showed up, the Pegasus, where they could just rebuild all their fighters, which I think was just a MacGuffin that they threw away, which I think was kind of dumb on their part, but whatever. Uh, let's see. Ava says, I like flying those. Um, oh, CSO, uh, Covenant Super... Uh, shit. I'm trying to remember. Yeah, the super carriers. Yeah, that thing was massive. That thing's like half the size of the U.S. I mean, it's just this huge, ginormous SOB. And uh, probably makes you feel good being behind that much armor. Just remember, you don't want somebody covered in an armored suit breaking inside and dropping a bomb next to your engine. That might be a bad thing. <laughs> and, you know, for a brick, they do fly pretty good, those guys in armor. Let's see, War Sniper. I think Ava means the introduction in Star Wars uh, pre-fending ships of, oh, warp away and pulling them out of their warp. Yeah. You mentioned earlier. Oh, shit. Okay. Yeah, they, that's what a lot of, in, they use the word introduction or interdiction, but interdiction simply means jam. And so you're, you're, you're jamming their ability to go into, uh, light speed. Okay. Just like you could jam sensors. Okay. Interdiction is interdiction. Any type of jammer is interdiction. So I, I just use that as a general term, really. Um, again, depends on where that's going to be. Okay. Uh, Caleb says, you mentioned earlier that you make reference to various sci-fi in your stories. Have you referenced Star Trek, Star Wars, Battlestar Galactica, or SG-1 in any of your stories yet? I have referenced a couple of the Treks. I definitely do Star Wars because it's a trap is so common and so ubiquitous that you kind of can't mess that up. Um, if you're looking for anything Star Wars for me to talk about the Space Wizards, you're most likely SOL. I might reference Yoda a little bit because he had a couple good lines, but... I'm sorry, those guys with laser dildos, they they don't work in any hard sci-fi at all. Uh, Battlestar Galactica, uh, I'm not well enough into the reference itself or into the uh, show itself to actually know enough of the lines. I unfortunately know too much about SG-1 because when you're deployed, you will watch everything. I'm sorry, you are so freaking bored. You will go to the gym three times in a day and you're still like, okay, who's got a video I can watch because I'm about to beat my head against the wall. I've read books I really wish I hadn't read. I've seen movies I wish I hadn't seen. I've seen stories I wish I hadn't seen. But it is what it is. Okay. But yes, I have referenced SG-1 a couple times. It's kind of hard to because they're kind of fixed in their own area. Um. Uh, I did use the whole uh, jumping a bomb once into an enemy ship. Um, the reason I don't use Trek too much is just because it's so kind of out there. It, it's not it's not truly hard science fiction, so it's kind of hard to use that. Um, I will say that uh, sometimes you might think I'm talking about the guys with the pointy ears when I'm actually talking about a Vulcan cannon. Yes, that is a thing. That just means a multi-barreled cannon. 
So don't think I'm actually uh, referencing those. Um, so out of those, yeah, I, I do reference the Trek a little. I do reference the Star Wars a, a bit more. Uh, SG one, not as much. And I can't do anything with Galactica cause I haven't, I, it was, it wasn't on when I was deployed. So I didn't see a bunch of it and I just don't have the time to binge watch it. I will say that everyone going crazy about the, old, uh, Adama maneuver. I think is one of the dumbest things they ever did. It looks great, but technically that whole setup was really, really dumb. Uh, leaving behind your best warship. Why? It, it didn't make it a lick of sense. It, the thing had massive friggin' weapons and was more armored than the bat, than the uh, Galactica ever would, could even think of being. It could bring out so much hate into that battle. That, and, wow. When it came in all guns blazing, that was a great scene, sure. But the fact of the matter is, if it didn't wait to show up to the last freaking second, they could have saved both of those ships. They outgunned the enemy with both of those ships combined were more than four of the enemy uh, base stations, space stars, whatever the hell you want to call. It. So I, ugh, it storyline wise, at least to me, nope, doesn't pass. And then they, you know, they go off in a weird other direction on that one. I just, I was just lost. Uh, let's see, ninjas here. If you can pull. Put all your universes into one universe, and they all have to fight in a war. Who would win out of who would? Who would win? Who? Oh, who would win out of who would win the war out of all your series that you create on YouTube? That's a good question. I would have to look into each of those. Now, I know ambush predators would put up one hell of a fight. They would. Um, the one with, with the Titan ship, I mean, that thing's so big that the ambush ships, even if they did, could fire on it, they'd be, you know, basically tore up really bad. That, that'd be, it's just hard to take down something that large. Um. Let's see. Uh, human battleships is uh, I don't know. It, it really that that's a really hard one to say because they all have different tech levels. Uh, they're oops, sorry, this thing just jumped. Um, but yeah, that that's 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 a hard question, Ninja. That's really that's a really really tough one to say um, because all the different strategies I'd have to throw in. You know, if we're looking at a battle royale. Uh, a lot of the stealth stuff wouldn't come into play. Some of these uh, universes, the the weapon ranges are in measured in light years. So I mean, it's it's I I can't even answer that one. I really can't. Um, human even in human bricks, the or sorry, uh, God damn it. The, the ship where human ships are flying bricks. It's actually called flying bricks. The, the one battle that they're act, that the main characters actually watch, they don't participate in, is done at ranges that are just insane. At least by most science fiction standards. So, yeah, again, I, oh, God. Damn, I, whew, there's so many I'd have to go through. I, I really couldn't answer that right now. I don't have one that's super powerful over the others. Okay, Ava said, all right, I'll be heading. Have fun. Good luck, all. Yep, see you, Ava. Um, Demon said, have a good night. Sniper saying, have a good night. Everybody saying, have a good night. Okay. Uh, War Sniper says, maybe a fun idea, Sin, that you use the names of your channel subscribers as the names of your ships like other YouTubers do in Stellaris or Hearts of Iron 4. Again, don't get ahead of me. Okay, it wasn't meant to be in this series here. But yes, that was on the table. Although, uh, the one right below, I couldn't actually put this one in. Lego Fleet Battles, because it says Lego. I, I'd get demonetized like that. 
Uh, let's see. Sin, do you... We do a lot of space battles. How long till we get a battle in... In death on land? In death? Or completely on the surface? I've had a few of those. I've had a lot of those, actually. It's just a little... Uh, the thing is, Lego, most people prefer listening to the actual ship slug it out. Um, is there stuff on the ground? Yeah, there's there's full series where it's nothing but ground pounders. So yeah, um, there's a few, there's plenty. Let's see, uh, War Simpson and oh shit, okay, he jumped up. Heart sire for, and this is just continuing from the other one, and that they can. Those what ships, dude? Are you? Is this the spell check messing you up? Ships, they want to be like we do now. Okay. Uh, yeah. Again, personalized ships. I got no problems with that, and as long as you guys don't mind me using your handles, I got no problems with that. The only reason I said that about SS Demon is because he has the SS in front of it, which is common. And Demon's sitting here talking about the uh, the Battle Royale. He thinks the humans would win, <laughs> considering almost everybody I have is mostly human or friends of Switch. Yeah, I think so. So, anyway, everybody, we have just passed the two-hour mark. And I very, very much appreciate you being with me tonight. And I hope to see y'all again next week. Right now, I'm going to be signing off because, uh, oh, shit. Yeah, yeah, look, even Demon's got to head to work. Uh, he's got to say goodbye to everybody. Bye, Demon. Okay. It's bye, Demon. Bye, Ava. Everybody's got to go to work. And, hey, you got to pay the bills. It is how it is. Okay. Um, hold on a sec. We got uh, someone new here. Just threw some in. Uh, got an Alan here. Says, how about a battleship using two-shot solid Interspace with cannon, cannon shot of shot gun round. You can use a shotgun first and strip the camo sensors and then a solid shot. Oh, yeah. Uh, that's just reloading the cannon itself. Anyways, yeah. Uh, I'm going to cut it off here, guys. So you can uh, hold off in the chats here. And safety brief. Really quick, guys, for tonight, if you're too tired and you're driving, please pull over. It is springtime also, which means a lot of critters are going to be running around to include larger critters that are going to not only crunch your car, but end up through your windshield. If you see something in the street that's running across, chances are there's another one behind it. So please slow down. I'd like to see you all back here next week. Same bat time, same bat channel at 16 or sorry, 1830. Eastern Standard Time. Make sure you all take care of yourselves. And uh, as they're saying in the chat, good night, everybody. This is Syntext ejecting.